Hi, I'm Dweezil Zappa, and this is Guitar Power. I'm happy to be here with Wayne Krantz. Let's talk about what attracted you to the guitar to begin with. The fact that nobody was telling me to practice it or play it. I just sort yeah. of found it, and I came off of like four years maybe of, of piano, you got to go to your lesson now and you have to practice now. And I wasn't really taken with the piano, so it's not that I elected to sit for hours playing it. Did that have anything to do with uh, having to learn the music theory and notation? Uh, I think so. I mean, how boring is that? There can't be anything more boring to a kid, I think. It's almost yeah. too boring for most adults to tolerate. But I did mean, you unless, keep up you know, with that to any degree? or, or? Not for a long time. I mean, yeah. for a long time the guitar was kind of an escape from that. And then I got interested. I happened to get interested in that stuff and yeah. into what it afforded you beyond your ear, and that was pretty seductive. And that became something that was important to your professional career, to be able to have that uh, communication with other yeah. musicians to I some mean, degree? Yeah, I mean, honestly, none of it's necessary. Theory is not necessary, I don't think. This is my opinion. It's not a necessary thing. Most of my favorite musicians wouldn't know an altered scale if it, you know, yeah. took him out to lunch. And it's fine, and nobody cares. The world certainly doesn't care. But I think it's just like, if you get interested in it, it's cool. You made a, a great book that was the guitarist operating Thanks, system. You say, if you have these three notes, if you play those three notes as a melody, and you use those three notes as a chord, you can make something sound good. I think it's just about, like the way, the way I, I think I meant it was, how do you improvise with those scales because like I was taught I don't you know probably different nowadays but when I was taught you know that's how you played C major you know it was a, it was a shape that your hand knew and you learned the shape and that's what allowed you to play that sound two problems one you only know how to play it how you've practiced it I'll speak for myself I only knew mm -hmm. how to play it like that and two, I had no way of plugging that into real life. I had no way of plugging that into music, making music and making yeah. it sound good. So that's what kind of got me on, onto this idea of like, it can also be practiced like. Like that, and, and that's the same, that's this. And, and it's kind of like, how do you get to that second thing, which is closer to me? You're still practicing. It's still math. Because my ear would usually not limit me to those notes. Like, if I'm playing music, I don't sit and think, okay, now I'm going to limit myself to that, or now I'm going to limit myself. I just play whatever I think sounds good. All players should try to get to that place in their thing, but some do have trouble being able to trust that instinct. Because guitar can be so much about a visual right. system sure. of, of places that you can play. And, right, and, and some people are good at improvising within those systems. Yeah. I just found that I wasn't. You instinctively leave out beats the way a drummer would in a fill. Hmm. At what point did you develop that approach as, as a guitarist? Because yeah. traditional playing for guitar players doesn't lead you in that direction at all. Not so. necessarily. I mean, although the, the, you know, the tradition is glorious and I support it 100%. For me, um, the way I think about rhythm is more tied to melody. If I sing, you know, da 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 there's no melody and there's no group, there's no, there's no uh, rhythm happening. There. Yeah. But if it's like da 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 those kinds of rhythmic ideas for a long time were ideas that I had, like more kind of like they're almost melodies. If I'm playing like, uh, you know, three, four. Like that's, the rhythm and the melody at that point are kind of the same thing. I mean, they, they work together to say something. It's a statement. It's like I'm talking. But uh, that's a very good way to describe it. But the thing that I find difficult to emulate from that yeah. is that you have to think rhythmically first. Sure. 
it, it requires a change in your thought process, which is harder than actual like physical playing, I think. Everybody musical has a rhythmic imagination. So it's, the first step, it seems to me, would be to get in touch with it, like to, to find out, to sort of map the terrain of yeah. rhythm in your head. From my own perspective, even though I've learned to play a lot of complicated things within my dad's music, which has complicated rhythms, yeah. learning that as a composed thing is one thing, but to improvise that way is a totally other thing. And you got to that point to develop your style in, in a way that I'm very curious about. But sure. I, I would like for you to be able to demonstrate yeah. a little bit of that. Great. I mean, you know, the fact that you've been playing that music, that, you've, that that music is you, that you grew up playing it, hearing it, if you're looking to access more rhythmic stuff as an improviser, like you've got a beautiful source happening up there. Well, so now it's just a matter a lot, of like, for sure. yeah, but it's just a matter of like accessing that as an improviser. That's the value of figuring out what the difference between playing compositionally and playing improvisationally is. You could practice playing compositionally for the rest of your life and still not know anything about improvising and, and vice versa. So the fact that those sounds are in your ear, you hear them, you, you've played them on the guitar. So now it's like, let's map out like what you can access as an improviser, like at any given moment. And to find that out, like you can do it in different ways. You don't even really need the guitar, you know, or really you don't even need a metronome. You can just sort of use your hands, like this is how I would think about it. It's like, you know, it's just these are quarter notes. It's, you know, we're, we're Western musicians, so it's 4-4 four, four and simple and, and conservative and superficial, but it's my love, so that's, you know, I love it. So, like, just with this, to go, like, bam, da-dum, dun da dum da dum da dum dun da da dum dun da dum 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 That's an improvisation of four bars of four, rhythmic improvisation. If I didn't know what that was, if this was new to me, if that's the first time I did that, I would, I would have recorded that and I would transcribe it. I would figure out what it was. I would look at the note values and see what is that thing that I'm hearing. Even if it's just dumb, dumb, you do one. Well, do this. Uh, but be, before, Give me one. Before, before we get to that, but I, just wanted, I just wanted to say one thing because even if I sat down to try to transcribe that, I'm actually not very good at, at music notation and everything. So like if, if I had you to look at to something and, and it was like anything with a dotted eighth or something, yeah. I would suddenly be like, oh, I don't know what the hell that is. It's not necessary that you do that. It just might be helpful. Basically, all you would do then is you would listen to the recording and you'd make observations about what it was. Say you did 10 of them and then you listen back to them and they all sounded exactly the same. At that point, you could say, well, what, why do they sound the same? Oh, they all have that one kind of, you know, note happening on the beat. That's all that ever happens. Like, mm -hmm. to me, that's step one, is just kind of seeing what's there. Yeah. That's not constant. You're not, at this point, you're not going da 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 That's not your idea. There's some other idea happening. Whatever that idea is, try to play it. Yeah. Just, uh, like, I don't know. Okay, whatever that was, and then maybe like... More sustained rhythm, right? Yeah. And then maybe like uh, more sparse. And then maybe something more constant. Um, Maybe something funkier like. Not, like that one was less gritty. Yeah. Everything else was like, it was on the 16th or it was on the 8th. Like what is happening there? What's happening there is I'm just trying to imagine like rhythms over this thing, the, the groove that this implies, that this is taken care of, like a drummer would be taking care of it. I don't have to play constantly anymore because I'm, 
I'm not playing alone. I'm not having to fill up the groove myself. You're talking yeah. about leaving spaces. That's a, that's a really, really good observation. It's like you can afford to leave spaces if you're not playing alone. It, it might seem obvious, but like when you actually learn to be part of something, listen and, and play sure. and have dynamics and all that stuff, that's a totally different thing than just everybody all on 10 just going for something. That's right. You know? That's right. And it's a different thing from just like playing the guitar in your room, too, which yeah. I did way too much of, actually, over the years. Yeah. So should we jam? Yeah, we could. Let's jam. Uh, so, uh, let me see. Let's just like. Thanks, man.